Twas the night before Christmas and all through the town, there were sports fans remembering how this year went down. After seven long years, no more Michigan choke. Their hopes now restored by their own Brady Hoke. While down in Columbus, a rough year is through with a temporary coach and some permanent tattoos. But now there is hope with a new coaching hire. For Christmas this year, here's a gift, Urban Meyer. But not every coach had so happy a fate like Paterno, Sandusky, and those at Penn State. While here in Toledo, a year to enjoy till a coach packed his bags and left for Illinois. But still, all the Rockets accomplished their goal. For the second straight year, they're off to a bowl. While down at BG, there's a new place to go. For hoops, let it stroll, let it stroll, let it stroll. In high school, St. Ursula sure put up a fight. In soccer and volleyball, it was close, but not quite. For Perrysburg baseball, a similar fate. The Jackets came up just a game short of state. For Rogers and Start and Central, the same great seasons that ended with heartbreaking games. And the boys from Whitmer, a season so fun till 13-0 turned to 13-1. And, and back in the spotlight, the silver and blue, their attitude led by Indomitian Sue. While the Cavs were so awful, their luck changed real quick from the worst in the league to the number one pick. Big Papa was perfect, nothing more, nothing less. His Tigers advanced to the ALCS, and the Rockets a new trophy to put on the shelf. The Trojans had nothing to fear but Shafir herself. The U.S. Senior Open, a magnificent scene. In the end, Olin Brown left his mark on the greens. And two selfish leagues in a full legal brawl made us question why we even love their sports at all. But the fact is we do, and sports is our heaven. Merry Christmas to all. What a great 2011. Yes, the game started at 4 o'clock, but I went undercover to give you a behind-the-scenes look at everything that happened on opening day. 10.36 a.m., the swamp shop already open for business. Shelves are being stocked. 10.52 a.m., employees sweeping the aisles, probably wondering how they're even dirty since this is the first game of the season. 11.03 a.m., cups are being stacked, condiments are prepared. Everyone works much harder once they're filmed. 11.12 a.m., the beer gets put on ice. Hours later, it will be sold for seven times its actual value. 11.17, popcorn starts popping, boxes being filled. 11.22, I try to get free food by mentioning Lee Conklin's name. The cashier looks at me and says, who? 11.27, the first mud hens arrive at the ballpark. 11.43, the infield is hosed down and I start to wonder, if you soak it willingly, why are you so quick to cover it when it rains? 11.49, it's sprinkling outside, some of the hens start taking indoor batting practice. 12.11, general manager Joe Napoli gets a phone call, contents unknown, but it must be a secret. He escapes into the shadows. 12.52, the players take the field to stretch. They assure me that no one will actually run like this during the game. 101, the infield is raked just in time for the players to start taking outdoor batting practice. 1.22 p.m., the doors aren't open to the public for eight more minutes, but one fan must have beaten security. No one seems worried. 1.30, doors open for Mud Hens happy hour. 2.09, Hens finish batting practice and start answering tough questions from the media, like, are you excited for opening day? I feel like the fans are excited about it. We, uh, we were home yesterday off and kind of creating a little bit of a buzz around town, and it's fun, it's exciting. 2.15 p.m., Columbus Clippers take batting practice. 3.10, food is served in the media room. I'm going dark for the next 20 minutes. 3.37, the ceremonial first pitch by the 180th fighter wing. 3.40, player introductions. 3.52, national anthem by Miss Ohio Becky Minger. Creepy man in the bleachers asks, it is Miss Ohio, right? 3.55, flyover ignites the crowd, and finally we are ready to play ball. It's an interesting way of looking at it. Rivalry as cooperation. Two sides look at each other and say the only thing we have in common is a strong disliking. Rivals need each other. Light wouldn't exist without darkness. Rivals might hate each other, but they love to hate each other. They're competitive, proud, passionately illogical to think that another group of people is evil simply because they wear a different colored shirt. It's time to celebrate rivalries. Falcons against Rockets, Bowling Green against Toledo, that team down south against that team from the north. The I-75 rivalry is next. Psst, gather round for the gossip. Did anyone see Kim Kardashian's wedding special last night? Uh, too much makeup and yeah, looked good in white, but who needs three dresses, really? Let's talk royalty. Princess Kate, sorry, Catherine Duchess of Cambridge, not pregnant, quit the rumors. Let her enjoy some time with Prince William people. Crush the Cougars? Yeah, that's a slogan, not a lifestyle, Ashton Kutcher, you naughty little dog. So Hillary Duff is pregnant with hockey husband Mike Comrie, and this week she said she definitely wants to find out if it's a boy or girl. But Jennifer Aniston, still on the fence about getting pregnant. And don't get me started on Will Smith and Jada. 
quite the pickle. Okay, I can't do this anymore. Generally speaking, I hate gossip. I feel like a lonely, bitter person. 